Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Nvidia completely screws us, but then they get screwed. Intel's monster 24 core i9 leaks and Ryzen getting up to 32 cores. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, NVIDIA has officially unveiled their updated 12GB RTX 2060. As you may expect, they didn't make a big deal out of it, opting to add the specs to their site and send out a quick press release. Of course, if you've been following the channel, you've known about this for a while. As the most recent leak suggested, the new 2060 comes with the same amount of cores as the 2060 Super, but with 12GB of GDDR6. It also comes with a base clock of 1400 70 MHz and a boost of 1650. Now, when it comes to the announcement, NVIDIA actually said something that not many outlets are really discussing. In it, they said, quote, The price will vary depending on the specific model and region. It is a premium version of the RTX 2060 6GB, and we expect the price to reflect that. Um... What did you say? The RTX 2060 is a three-year-old GPU. The 3060 more than destroys it, and your response is that it's a premium version of the 2060? I don't care! That's like releasing a premium Xbox 360 in 2021 for more than the original model when it was released. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Now, while they haven't given us a base price with the premium word used, I have no doubt it won't be cheap. Look, I get that the market will basically eat up anything you throw at it right now, but this is purely because you're unable to supply enough 3060s. This should be a, we're sorry, we're trying really hard, but this is the best we have kind of response. What's worse is that Nvidia confirmed with Tech Power Up that they won't have a Founders Edition card. So unless they make something like a million of these, you know AIBs will We'll price them to the moon. So I guess there goes cheaper prices. Maybe AMD has an answer? But first, computer science is expected to grow massively in the future, so give the gift that lasts a lifetime with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the website and app that's made to teach the STEM field. And we've teamed up to bring the first 200 users 20% off the annual premium. But what makes Brilliant so great? Well, for starters, they teach you by having you actually do it instead of just memorizing formulas or listening to boring lectures. They use interactive lessons to show you how the concepts work. To top it off, Brilliant has been updating their courses to make them even more interactive. And speaking of courses, they've got a ton. Whether you're a beginner or professional, Brilliant has something for everyone. So don't wait and give the gift of learning with 20% off today by visiting the link in the description below. Or head to brilliant.org slash gamermail to get the discount for yourself. Next up for today, NVIDIA is in trouble. Now, I know I'm a little late on this one because I had other stories already lined up, but it's a huge deal. So what am I talking about? Well, if you don't know, back in 2020, NVIDIA announced that they were acquiring ARM for the low price of $40 billion. At the time, it was almost unbelievable. ARM is a company that plays a massive role in the tech world. See, they license their technology out to tons of giant companies. I'm talking Apple, Qualcomm, and so many more. It's pretty much in everything. And the idea of NVIDIA, who I would say has a financial incentive to hurt some of the companies that license ARM, owning all of that was scary to say the least. Well, it looks like it may not be happening, as the Federal Trade Commission is officially suing NVIDIA over the acquisition. The FTC stated, quote, the the proposed vertical deal would give one of the largest chip companies control over the competing technology and designs that rival firms rely on to develop their own competing chips. If the FTC wins this lawsuit, it would apparently block NVIDIA from the acquisition, or at least that's the goal. The UK has also been investigating the purchase recently, so it's looking more and more likely that the deal won't go through. Of course, time, as always, will tell. Next up, it looks like Intel isn't done upping the core count on their CPUs, proving that the company is seriously fighting back against AMD. In a new tweet from resident leaker Komachi, he shared a link to a very interesting benchmark from Bapco's Crossmark database. The entry has since been taken down, but not before Tom's hardware was able to grab a screenshot. In it, you can see that we have a genuine Intel CPU with 24 cores and 32 threads. That means we're looking at eight performance cores and 
and a whopping 16 efficiency cores. As you can see, it's part of Intel's Raptor Lake series, which means we're looking at their 13th gen series of CPUs. And this is obviously going to be an i9. As far as performance, the chip is actually slower than the 12900K, but that's more or less irrelevant at such an early stage. At the end of the day, it's interesting to see that Intel is already planning to up the core count in their mainstream CPUs just one generation after they effectively doubled them. Now, if game devs could just start using all of those threads, that would be great. Of course, with all of that said, AMD obviously isn't sitting still either. In fact, they're about to make a big change with their next-gen series of CPUs. Now, when I say next-gen, I mean their Zen 4-based processors, not their more iterative Zen 3D update. Regardless, the story comes from Red Gaming Tech, and according to a couple of their sources, AMD at least has a 24-core Ryzen CPU sample. In fact, one even said that they could get up to a whopping 32 cores. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean AMD will, but that they can if they need to. Personally, I think AMD is likely waiting to see what Intel brings to the table with their 13th gen parts. And honestly, I wonder if that's why we originally heard Zen 4 would only have PCI Express 4.0 on the AM5 platform. Remember that those came from a gigabyte leak, and Red Gaming Tech even mentioned that he heard the same thing. Yet AMD flat came out and stated that it would in fact have PCI Express 5.0. My point is that I wonder if AMD did that because Intel was releasing PCI Express 5.0 with Alder Lake. Maybe it forced their hand, and maybe that's what they're doing here, waiting to see what Intel brings. Of course, given we've seen a 24-core Raptor Lake part, AMD really may release a 32-core CPU. So while that does it for today, would you want a 32-core Ryzen CPU, or are you just happy Nvidia may not be buying ARM after all? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!